Coming up on Locked on Dodgers, we now know who the Dodgers starting second best baseman will be in 2024. And while it's not a surprise, it is a little bit surprising how we found out Mookie Betts is the starting second baseman. We're going to talk about what it means for Mookie, what it means for the Dodgers outfield for pursuits, and how it came to be that that was announced on December 4th. That's what's on tap. So let's get Locked on Dodgers. You are Locked on Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Dodger fans, this is Locked On Dodgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Remember, this show is free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. Or even better, go and subscribe wherever you're watching and listening right now. Then you can be an everydayer just like we are. If this is your first time with us, I am Jeff Snyder. My co-host is Vince Semperio. It's just me for the first half. Vince, for the second half, we're doing a split episode. Vince and I are both lifelong Dodger fans, just like you are. We've also both spent time covering the Dodgers in the press box and the locker room, so we're not quite insiders, but we bring you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue every weekday morning. And uh, that there was actually some news for the Dodgers, not in signings. We still don't know where Shohei Otani is playing next year. We don't know where Yoshinobu Yamamoto is playing next year. We don't know a lot of things about what it's going to look like for the Dodgers roster next year. But one thing we do know, thanks to Dave Roberts, is that Mookie Betts will be the everyday second baseman. Uh, that is the word straight from the manager's mouth. Uh, you know, we, we'll we'll parse that a little bit, but uh, I'm going to pop it up here on the screen. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, he said he was on an interview with with Alana Rizzo, former Dodgers reporter Alana Rizzo. She's now on high heat with uh, one obnoxious guy. And Dave Roberts said uh, Alana asked him the question: Where's Mookie Betts going to play? Uh, is he going to split time between? The outfield and second base like he did last year and you could tell she didn't necessarily expect to get as candid of an answer as she got because Dave Roberts said it's pretty safe to say that number 50 Mookie Betts is going to be our everyday second baseman now it's we, we just talked yesterday about how uh you know with Andrew Friedman and we shouldn't have expected big news when Andrew Friedman was talking to Kirsten Watson I went into this interview with Dave Roberts and Alana Rizzo feeling kind of the same way. It's going to be a, you know, just a friendly interview. They're going to, he's going to spout cliches and and talk about, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but nothing really new. That's how these interviews always go. Um, but this time he actually broke news. You know, Mookie Betts as the everyday second baseman is a departure. Mookie Betts played a lot of second base last year, but he also played a lot of right field. And Jason Hayward, uh, it, Roberts went on in his reply to mention Jason Hayward, which is kind of funny. As Eric Stephen pointed out, Jason Hayward isn't currently under contract with the Dodgers. They haven't announced that deal yet. But Dave Roberts said, uh, bringing Jason Hayward back, you know, that he will be the right fielder against right-handed pitching, like he was, you know, most of last year, at least the second half of the year. Uh, so that'll be Hayward's role. Uh, but we, we, what we don't know is who will be the right-handed hitting half of that right field platoon because. What we do know is it won't be Mookie Betts. You know, he might play some right field once in a while, but everyday second baseman. I saw people on on Twitter trying to to you know backtrack for Dave. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to play second base every day. I've got an English degree; it's hanging right there on my wall. You can't see it; it's right off camera. But uh, I mean, it says uh, degree of the Bachelor of Arts in English. Every day. It's a pretty basic word. It's a compound word. It combines two words, every and day. Uh, now, there is a little bit of wiggle room because they don't actually play every day. He should be called the every game second baseman, but that doesn't flow as well. Every day second baseman means that Mookie Betts is the Dodgers second baseman. And when he plays somewhere else, it will be the exception. It will be a rare thing. It may not happen at all. Mookie Betts may only play second base this year. You know, maybe a little DH, you know, once in a while. Uh, but, you know, uh, Mookie Betts is going to play second base. And it's kind of wild because Mookie Betts, until this past season, had won six straight gold gloves in right field. Uh, and uh, then he didn't win the gold glove. He We had hoped he'd win the utility gold glove. He didn't. 
he was a finalist at both right field and utility. Um, so in the last seven seasons, Mookie Betts has been a finalist uh, for gold glove eight times uh, at two positions, right field and utility. He's going to be the starting starter at one of those, uh, something that's not one of those positions, you know, second base. And, uh, you know, I saw other people saying that it doesn't make sense to lock Mookie down to one position because uh, a lot of his value comes from his versatility. And I don't think that's quite right. Well, I, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to save that for the second segment, I guess, where we're talking more about whether this is the right move for Mookie himself. For me, the, the big surprising thing here was that Dave, Dave Roberts said this, and I wonder if he intended to go into that interview and break news, or if it was just something, you know, did he realize he was breaking news? Did he just figure that people would assume that already? Or did he know I'm about to say something that's going to set social media ablaze? Um, and, you know, without any real news uh, it, anywhere in baseball, really, like there were a couple minor signings, but nothing major. Uh, a perennial all-star, future Hall of Famer, six-time gold glover in right field, being named the starting second baseman for one of the best teams of baseball qualifies as really big news. And so uh, I, I I hope we get more behind the scenes as far as if Roberts knew he was breaking news, if he relished that, if he chose that moment to announce that. Uh, he did say that he had already talked to Mookie Betts about it. Um, and, and so, you know, and if he chose Alana Rizzo specifically because her ties to the Dodgers, so many questions that we may or may not ever get answers to. Uh, but it was it was kind of fun to actually have like David Roberts is the king of the non-answer, the king of saying words without conveying anything. Um, it all of his post-game interviews, all of his like, I mean everything. Dave Roberts, and, and this isn't a criticism. I like it about Dave Roberts because I don't think that we necessarily have the right to know every single thing, and I kind of like in a in a uh, masochistic sort of way that he just he just doesn't care and just refuses to give any information. So it's kind of funny that he's the one who gave this information. And I, I, I assume it was calculated and that he, uh, he gave this information because he decided it was time to give that information. Um, it, it will be interesting to see. And, and like I said, I'm going to, in the second segment, second segment, I'm going to talk about what this means for Mookie, if it's the right move for him. And then the last segment, Vince is going to talk about what it means for the Dodgers outfield, because Suddenly, uh, if Mookie is a second baseman, that means the Dodgers basically have Jason Hayward, James Outman, and Chris Taylor right now. And then, you know, Miguel Vargas and Michael Bush, who uh, could maybe be left fielders. You know, so there's they could slap together an outfield from what they have, but uh, plenty to talk about there that Vince will talk about in the third segment. Uh, so like I said, I'm going to come back in just a minute. I'm going to talk about specifically Mookie Betts and if this is the right move for him and what it means for him and his future. So uh, I'll come back and do that. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. And please keep it Locked On Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Like I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of real life, but we just talked for a minute about preparing for tough situations. Whether you're on extended travel, bracing for a major weather event, or limited by yet another supply shortage, you are covered. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical, life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily medications can be ordered in, in a one-year supply, even ED generics for Cialis or Viagra. Viagra. Jace Medical has the Jace case. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. I did this myself a few months ago, and the process could not have been easier. It was great. So it's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com and use offer code locked on to get $20 off your order. Hey, I'm back. I want to thank you for making locked on Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Also want to remind you that you uh, locked on has launched the first ever 24 seven sports streaming channel 
on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today. They've also launched a 24-7 Los Angeles sports channel on YouTube called Locked On Sports Los Angeles. You can check out both of those. Locked On Sports Today will give you all of the top stories uh, in sports with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Locked On Sports Los Angeles will give you the same in-depth coverage, but focus specifically on Los Angeles. So you'll get this podcast, Locked On Lakers, Locked On Rams, Locked On Chargers, Locked On Angels, Locked On Clippers. Uh, you know, there's there's Locked On shows for UCLA and USC. Uh, so many LA sports, uh, Locked On Kings. I think the, uh, the Ducks are probably on the Locked On Sports Los Angeles. So all your Los Angeles area sports needs are covered on Locked On Sports Los Angeles. So check out both of those two 24 straight, 24-7 streaming channels on YouTube. Uh, if you are watching on this episode on YouTube, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the YouTube comments section. If you're listening on the podcast, we'd love to hear from you through social media or email. Uh, we'll give you all that contact info at the end like we always do. And we want to especially thank our everydayers. Those of you who are with us every day, it means a ton to us. Uh, we hear from a lot of you, and we we love talking Dodgers with you, and we could not be more appreciative of you guys. If you're not an everydayer, just watch or listen every weekday morning, and then you are an everydayer. It's like magic, everydayer magic. So uh, going back to Mookie Betts, and we're just talking Mookie today, uh, although the, Mookie touches on a lot of things. Like we said, we already talked about Miguel Vargas and Michael Bush, how – both of them are uh, kind of without a position now, unless it's left field, because the Dodgers have Max Muncy at, at third base and now Mookie Betts at second base, Freddie Freeman at first base. That's all the positions that those two guys play. Uh, Gavin Lux, as of right now, the plan is for him to be the starting shortstop. And, uh, you know, Miguel Rojas will go into the utility role, which is what they signed him for. Um, obviously, uh, the DH role will is yet to be determined by what Shohei, Shohei Otani decides. Um, but, you know, left field might be it for Miguel Vargas or Michael Bush. And the fact is, there's only one left field spot on any given day. And so uh, it seems even more likely now that one or both of those guys will be traded this offseason. Uh, and, you know, Vince will talk may maybe on what some of those trades might look like, because uh, if the Dodgers are in the outfield market, which they probably are, uh, that might come on the trade market. So Vince will cover that in the next segment. I want to talk about Mookie specifically, and is this the right move for him? And the short answer is yeah, because like I started to say before I cut myself off in the first segment, um, I saw people saying that it didn't make sense because Mookie's value is in his versatility, and I don't think that's quite right. There was a lot of value in Mookie's versatility last year, but that was compared to Mookie as a right fielder because – the fact is second base is a more valuable position than right field. And what I mean by that is right field is easier to play and therefore it's easier to get offense at because if you have a guy like, you know, you think of the big lumbering right fielders that, that teams have had throughout baseball history. My favorite player growing up was Mike Marshall. Uh, he played right field mostly because he was a big lumbering guy, had good power, uh, not great defensively. Stick him in right field. If if he's not great defensively but has a strong arm, he can play right field. Uh, and so right field is one of the least valuable positions on the field because the it's so much easier to find offense there, find somebody who can play the defensive position and hit the ball well. Second base is notoriously not a power position. And, and that's simply because – to play second base, you generally have to be quick and nimble and, you know, usually smaller. And Mookie Betts fits that bill. Uh, what Mookie Betts doesn't fit the bill is, wait, how, how's this five hundred uh, five foot eight guy hitting, you know, 35 home runs? And uh, that's, that's the value that Mookie Betts brings. So while there was value in his versatility last year, all of that value came from being able to play second base, not being able to play right field and second base. It was, we have a right fielder who can play second base. That's valuable. He's even more valuable playing second base every day because then they can just, you know, and, you know, get that offensive position in right field or find somebody who's a good right fielder. Jason Hayward's a good defensive right fielder and hits well against right-handed pitching. That's a, that's a great setup right there. And so Mookie has potential to be an elite offensive second baseman and a good defensive second baseman. There are not very many of those in baseball at all. You look at like 
like even Jose Altuve, I think Mookie Betts is a better defensive second baseman than Jose Altuve. Um, and offensively, you know, they're they're not the same kind of hitters. Mookie has more power. Altuve has power, but not quite Mookie power. You know, Altuve maybe hits for a higher average on, you know, in general. But, you know, that that's the kind of guy we're talking about is a guy who uh, can hit at an elite level and play good defense at second base. Mookie Betts is you know, immediately – becomes one of the best second basemen in baseball. And when you have a guy that, you know, and he was one of the best right fielders too, but, uh, you know, second base, like I said, it's more valuable, valuable position. So for the Dodgers, it's definitely the right move. And for Mookie himself, you know, he's had back issues. He's had hip issues. Uh, he has said that the shorter runs to second base is, is a big deal to him. Uh, playing in the in the infield, you don't you know you never have to chase down a ball in the right center field gap gap, all that running. Uh, he likes being in the infield because it's a more social position, all that stuff. Like Mookie prefers second base. He came up as a second baseman with Red Sox, and then you know they moved him to to right field because they had Dustin Pedroia. Well, now the time has come for Mookie to be back at second base, and for Mookie going forward, he's 31 years old now. Uh, he's under contract for what eight more years with the Dodgers, something like that. Uh, it you know a long time, and it's in the Dodgers' best interest and in Mookie's best interest for Mookie to remain healthy and to remain feeling good physically. And you know maybe playing second base full time, he doesn't, he won't be as streaky. You know he he went through uh, slumps where he just you know like his September was bad last year and his October was worse. Uh, October was only three games, but the September was was bad, and it you know cost him a shot at the MVP. Uh, he still finished second, had a great season, but you know if if they can keep him fresh throughout the season, uh, even better. You know, get six months, seven months of production from Mookie instead of five. That's huge. Uh, really, it was four. Mookie was lousy in April and lousy in September. He was awesome May, April, uh, you know May, June, July, August. Uh, and you know, earned that second place in the MVP voting. Man, if they could get seven months of of awesomeness from Mookie, it would be awesome. And I, I said awesome too many times that sense, but you know what I'm saying? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, so, for the Dodgers and for Mookie, I think that's absolutely the right move. Especially because, like I said, right field is is a more replaceable position, and there are options available. You know, whether it's in free agency or in the trade market. That's what Vince is going to talk to you guys about. Uh, you know, I I kind of wish that I was talking about it because there's a lot of fun stuff. And it's guys we've talked about before. Some guys maybe we haven't. But uh, Vince is going to come talk to you about all of the Dodgers options in the outfield, what this means for the Dodgers outfield pursuits, all of that. So thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, you know what? Vince will be along in a minute. Yo, 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 Vince here to close out the episode. And as Jeff alluded to, I'll be talking about the Dodgers and what they're going to do in the outfield now or what they can do in the outfield now that Mookie Betts has been named the second baseman for the Dodgers. And I think the main significance of Dave Roberts kind of saying Mookie's going to be the second baseman is that, you know, now we know the Dodgers are going to be looking for an outfielder specifically. I... I guess in theory they could still look for a shortstop, but they've already publicly said Gavin Lux will be the shortstop. Uh, Dave Roberts has said that. Brandon Gomes and Andrew Friedman have said that. So I do think they're going to let Lux have shortstop and with Miguel Rojas right behind him. So what it means for the Dodgers now is that they need two bats this winter. They need a DH and they need an outfielder. And Well, Technically, that's true. They need a DH and they need an outfielder. If they do not get Shohei Otani, then they need a DH and a third baseman or outfielder because then Max Muncy can become DH. So if you're working under the pretense that Otani is going to sign with the Dodgers, then they really just need an outfielder. And Or if you're working with, if it's Otani, they don't get Otani, they'll just go to J.D. Martinez then again, they still need an outfielder. And, you know, we've, Jeff talked a lot about outfielders last week or a couple weeks ago, and most of those outfielders are still available that he talked about. Um, 
but I do think it it changes it from okay, they might need an outfielder to they definitely need an outfielder. I do not think they're gonna run out a lineup that has Chris Taylor, James Outman, and Jason Hayward as their primary outfielders. Now it wouldn't be, you know, the worst outfield in baseball if that was the case, but it wouldn't be as strong as it could be, especially with some of the names that are out there. And you know, specifically with Taylor, if you make him an everyday type outfielder, uh, it does take away from some of the versatility that he does have uh, that can help out. So, and also, like, you know, will they look for somebody to take at bats in right field against left handed pitching, or are they really going to make, you know, Hayward a, a true everyday outfielder, which I don't think is the case? You know, you look internally first and there's not many options. Like I said, Taylor Outman, Hayward would be the outfielders right now. Michael Bush and Miguel Vargas, uh, Fabian Ardaya of the Athletic did say that the Dodgers told Vargas to work on second base, third base, and left field, I believe. Michael Bush has worked outfield a little bit as well. So if those guys remain with the team and they're not traded, they could potentially be outfield options. Um, although, again, they'd really have to hit because realistically their defense would probably be average to less than average uh, just based on the fact that they haven't really played that. Ath- you know, Athletic-wise, I think they'd be able to figure it out, but it's also you know kind of a big change, especially if you've been playing infield your whole life. So, those are the first two that come to mind in terms of anything, but also, you know, as we kind of saw last year with the Dodgers, while you want to give your young talent the chance, you know, you are in a window right now where you kind of need instant production. And, you know, had they not trusted Miguel Vargas with the starting role last year, you know, would they have pursued someone else on offense and, you know, get that, not that offense was the issue over the course of the season. Obviously, they scored 900 runs for the first time in L.A. You know, they were one of the best offenses of baseball. Obviously, that didn't come to fruition in the playoffs. But, again, I don't know. You could have gave me the and the all-star lineup. And, I, you know, and if they're all wearing Dodger uniforms in October, I wouldn't be able to guarantee that they'd be able to score. So, I think internally they they don't have the option. The other options are Johnny DeLuca, or at least players that are on the 40-man roster already. The other options are Johnny DeLuca and Andy Pajes. Johnny DeLuca spent some time in the majors last year. Again, not a guy that you'd expect to take on a, a heavy role. Maybe if they do get an everyday type left fielder, a guy that's, you know, they're going to pencil in there. You know, maybe DeLuca could carve out a role as the right fielder against left-handed pitching, you know, when when Hayward sits. Uh, that wouldn't be a huge role for him to take on. And, you know, he if he could be just average at it, it'd be, you know, with some good defense that could help out. So he would be an option, you know, but again, I throw him in the same boat as Vargas and Bush as unproven he the Luca obviously has better defense because he's been an outfielder, um, but not as heralded offensively. But again, they'd have to be really good offensively in order to kind of work their way into a lineup. The other one is Andy Pajes, who missed almost all of last season with after getting shoulder surgery. He's twenty. He'll be twenty. He's turning twenty three in a couple of days, but again, hasn't played has one game above double a coming off surgery. I don't think, you know, that's someone you're going to stick into a plan. He could be someone that works his way onto the major league roster with the strong season. Uh, but don't think he'd be someone that they expect to come out of spring on the opening day roster. So internally they don't necessarily have any options or any surefire options. Now, some people may believe that, you know, Michael Bush offensively can be a little bit of a surefire option, but he also bats left-handed, which is, you know, not what they need to kind of platoon in right field. And I don't think they'd go into the season giving him or Vargas an everyday left field position, just, you know, based on what I said, like they need a DH and a left fielder to kind of round out the line. They don't need, but knowing 
you know, kind of how the last couple of seasons have gone. I don't think they want to kind of run into that of having unproven talent in an everyday role. Now you could say that, you know, maybe Gavin Lux is unproven a bit. I don't know if he's so much unproven as we don't know coming off injury. Like he, he, in, in 2022, he was pretty good for the Dodgers uh, in the role that he had, you know, hitting near the bottom of the lineup, playing second base, you know, he was pretty solid. Um, you know, if you consider one year solid uh, proven, then, you know, that, that just depends on some antics and how you feel about the situation. But I do think you can get away with it because especially if, you know, they got away with Miguel Rojas as pretty much their shortstop for an entire season. So even if Gavin Lux struggles and it's a combination of Lux and Rojas at short, you know they can get by, but they do need, again, a, a good DH and a good outfielder. So now you look at the external or you look at free agent options and, you know, some of the guys we've talked about, Teoscar Hernandez, who they were linked to before. Yeah, it was Teoscar Hernandez, who they were linked to before. They haven't been linked to Lourdes Gurriel Jr., but he's a name that could be possible. Uh, Jock Peterson's always a name that's, that's uh, possible with the Dodgers. Tommy Pham, who we've talked about a couple times. David Peralta coming off uh, surgery. You got Michael Brantley, who's a free agent, who I don't know if, you know, if, as long as Astros keep wanting him back, I'd imagine he keep going back there. He's always a guy I've always liked and wanted, but he has been hurt the last few years. He's still been pretty good when not hurt, but uh, he's been hurt a lot more often than not. Joey Gallo, Jerks and Profar, Eddie Rosario, you know, the names kind of go down from there. Obviously, Cody Bellinger is one. Like, you're not specifically looking for a left fielder, right fielder, center fielder. You're looking for an outfielder, preferably one that can maybe play some center, but not necessarily needed because Chris Taylor can play center. Uh, when out, you know, if Outman doesn't play center, Jason Hayward can play center. Uh, you know, so a corner outfielder is probably just fine. Cody Bellinger is the biggest name out there in terms of outfielders. I don't think the Dodgers are going to go after him uh, unless, like, you know, they don't get Otani. They don't get, you know, J.D. Martinez. They do need a big bat. Maybe they could visit that. And and it's been reported that Bellinger is going to kind of wait out till some of the bigger names like that have settled uh, and then kind of, you know, find his way with whatever team doesn't end up with one of the big names. So I guess it's possible, but I, I wouldn't count it out. You know, in terms of guys that can play center or are mostly center, after Bellinger kind of falls off, Kevin Kiermaier, Michael A. Taylor, Adam Duvall, Harrison Bader, you know, Jake Marisnik, who they've had, uh, nobody of that caliber. Although the one name that, you know, guy that's labeled as a center fielder that could make sense is Jung Ho Lee. He was officially posted on Monday. He had, There's a 30-day window for players from the Korean League. Uh, so we'll know his fate in, or, you know, we'll know his team in, in at least 30 days. So Jung Ho Lee is a name to look out for, uh, someone that the Dodgers could go after, you know, a little bit unproven players coming from the Korean league, uh, instead of coming from Japan, it's a mixed bag of success, uh, you know, and it, and sometimes it takes them some time. Hassan Kim, you know, wasn't much of an offensive threat when he first came over, uh, and then became an offensive threat threat as the, as time has gone by. So, you know, that that's somebody that they could be interested in. And then again, Teoscar Hernandez, probably the best of the bunch after Bellinger in terms of offensive production. And he's a guy that, that would fit. And then you got like Hunter Renfro, Randall Gritchuk, Will Myers, Kevin Pillar, you know, Cole Calhoun. There's not much there. Uh, Jorge Soler, who has been a DH, I would imagine he's still – Athletic enough to play an outfield spot if he really wanted. Andrew McCutcheon, who's getting a little bit older, I doubt he leaves Pittsburgh if they want him back, but he's someone, you know, he is a little bit older, maybe more of a DH type, but I think he keeps himself in good enough shape to, to play a, a left field if they needed him to. So those are the types of guys that you're looking at. And again, not too much uh, to write home about. I think after... I think it, it, in the, in that sense, I think it's, you know, Tasker, Lourdes, and, you know, then you kind of hope that or you find someone that can help out or, or can fill a role. Like Jock Peterson, Tommy Pham can fill roles. I don't think they're everyday left fielders, especially Jock Peterson. He's not much defensively as we've, you know, kind of seen over the years. And 
you know, David Peralta was good when he was healthy that we know of now. But again, he's another year older and coming off surgery. Is that someone you want to, you know, put some actual, you know, innings behind? I don't know. So the free agent market, not as strong if they need that outfielder. Now where the outfield market can get stronger is in the trade market, specifically with one name of Randy Rosarena, who we talked about before. You know, at this point, he would just be so perfect for what the Dodgers, what they need and, and you know, fill exactly what they want. You know, someone that you can put in left field every day, don't have to worry about it. They can worry about a platoon or, or something to that effect. And in right field, you know, assuming James Outman kind of keeps the same production over there in center field, you know, then you have Chris Taylor as a guy that can roam around. You know, you can look for more versatility off the bench. Uh, instead of somebody that, you know, specifically plays a certain spot. So that's possible. You know, I think Randy Rose Reina is the, the kind of the, the guy that makes the most sense. Now, you know, in an ideal world, the Dodgers offseason can come down to like Shohei Otani and then a blockbuster trade for Glasnow and a Rose Reina. And I think, you know, that fills enough of their needs to where they can kind of fill in with second to third tier players behind it or with young talent behind it. Um, and that and that makes sense to me. I, I think that's kind of where the Dodgers might want to sit. Is I think if you can go get yourself an established outfielder that can play every day, I think you need to go out and do it. I think you know, as much as the Dodgers have had success with platoons and you know role players and things of that nature, I do think you have enough uncertainty in in other spots. Or you have enough certainty in other spots that you don't need uncertainty if you don't need it. You know, now that they have Freddie at first, Mookie at second, you know, Muncie at third or DH, you have Will Smith behind the plate. You know, you have Hayward out there in right field for a majority of the time. You have Outman out there, you know, probably everyday player. At least he's earned it to start the season. Obviously, you have enough established guys to where platoon could make sense. But I think, you know, you're the Dodgers and and you have – we're going to keep talking about this four-year window that they have with, you know, Freddie and Mookie. Now, you st- obviously, the sustainable winner is still the goal, but, you know, you have to maximize the windows you have in that sustained, you know, sustained success. I think that window is right now. So go out there and get a left fielder or an outfielder specifically that can, you know, play every day and and, and be in your lineup and, and provide a lot of things for you. So that's a look at the outfield market there's some other trade names out there that could emerge over the next few days but i think you know randy would would fit the bill in a few different ways so that's gonna do it for today's episode thank you all for listening thank you for making locked on dodgers your first listen of the day make sure to find us wherever you get podcasts and on youtube becoming every day or by listening or watching every day all you gotta do is search for locked on dodgers tell your friends and family about us remember locked on has locked on sports today and locked on sports los angeles 24 7 streaming for all the updated news around the sports world and around the LA sports world. You can find us on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Locked on Dodgers. Jeff is on Twitter at Snydog. I'm at Vincent's 91. You can DM either, DM either of us for questions, comments, or concerns. You can also send them via email, LockedOnDodgers at gmail.com or via voicemail text at 323-863-5625. We're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us. When you get in your car, if you're at home, search my advice by podcast, Locked on Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one.